today on Ask This Old House. A chainsaw is one of the most dangerous tools you can use, but it comes with some built-in features to keep you safe. And maker Ben Ueda is stopping by to show us how to make a simple but elegant piece of furniture. I was taking a shower, and the shower valve actually came off in my hand. It stripped off. Yep. Took it to the home center. I got a new one, but it's never quite worked right. It actually leaks down in the crawl space. So it leaks inside the wall. That's correct. All right, you know it doesn't mess, right? <laughs> well aware. And if you have an old shower valve like this, they're not as hard to repair as you might think. I'm heading to Nashville to show you how. Uh, hey guys. Hey, sorry I'm late. I've been running all over the place looking for this guest that we got coming today. I can't find him. What'd you do? Lose him? I didn't lose him. I don't think he's here. I think he's late. I was running up and down the bar and everything like that. Haven't seen him. We've just been getting ready for our day. All right. Well, I guess I got a few minutes. So why don't you tell me what's going on? Chainsaws, huh? I like that. We're going to talk a little bit about being safe with a chainsaw, but I got to get it ready. So I'll see you in a little while. Uh oh, you're not ready. My guest's not here. You got something for me, Richard? I'm actually off to Nashville. Going to help somebody repair a shower valve in there. Bill. You're leaving, huh? I'm out of here. You're not going to get to meet this guy. All right. So you know what we're doing. Who's this guy? Uh, well, he's a maker. Um, so maker. Maker. What's he that? makes stuff. <laughs> he's like a DIY guy. He makes videos online. A lot of people ah, watch it. Okay. We've worked with these makers over the years a couple times. Yeah. His name is Ben Ueda, and uh, I thought I'd have him in here. We're going to do a little project that sort of exemplifies hey, his unique. Hey, hey, you're looking hey. for Ben? I am. Yes, this guy Ben Ueda. Yeah. Well, I've been talking to him for about an hour and a half over there. <laughs> you gonna tell me? Well, I would have told you if you were on time. We gotta learn to communicate. I was not, boys. Was, <laughs> you're late. You're always late. Hey, Ben, good to see you. Good to see you. Tommy didn't give you too much of a hard time. No, buddy. no, he's fine. Yeah, he saved that for me. So nice to meet you in person, because I've seen the videos. There are literally hundreds of these out there now, millions of views. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of your thing now. Yeah, I, 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 would, I feel more comfortable being described as a designer, because my making skills are pretty beginner level. But what I try to do is actually try to design not just what the thing's going to look like, but try to design easier way to make things. And then with my limited skills, I can sort of show people that it's not that hard. Right. And you come from that background, former yeah. architect? Backgrounds in architecture with a focus on sustainable design. But one of the things that always sort of uh, bothered me a little bit is with that business model, that of sort of a custom service profession, uh, you're sort of incentivized to work with wealthier and wealthier clients. Right. You know, I came from a, a pretty uh, uh, poor background, so I really wanted to figure out how to take my ideas and make them available to people for free. So that's the idea of putting them out there with the video, something that is easily repeated by people. Yeah, and it's probably one of the better ways to use the internet. All right, so let's talk about this now famous bet that you and a friend made. And, and the idea was, I mean, if I got this right, that everything is made very inexpensively over there, mm -hmm. and then we bring it over here. Why can't we make it here in this country at an affordable price, right? Right. Well, the assumption is that it's expensive for to manufacture things in America, and that's because labor costs are generally higher than they are in a lot of other places in the world. So we actually saw that as an opportunity to actually substitute labor with your own two hands so that you're replacing one of the expensive parts. Mm. And then the only thing we had to do was figure out how to motivate and incentivize people to use their own hands to build something, and we did that by sharing design ideas that were pretty easy to repeat. So you and a buddy made a bet, and, and he basically said there's no way that you can get all of these things, thousands or tens of thousands of things made here uh, in a cost-affordable way. Yeah, anytime somebody thinks that something's impossible, it's normally because they have a couple of assumptions along the way. And I knew he was assuming that the only way to spread a product or a design idea is through mass production. Right. But I knew that you could, it's easy to disseminate information on the internet, so I just knew I was going to just do a quick demo and let it go viral and let people take it from there. All right, well, let's see where people took it. Are you going to show us this little magic trick of yours? Yeah, so I like to use a lot of kind of unusual materials. I'll borrow a lot from sort of more industrial materials and techniques and stuff like that and sort of mix them together. And concrete is one of my favorite materials to work with. One, because it's available everywhere in the world. Yep. A lot of other countries, they don't have as many sort of forests and stuff as we do, so concrete becomes this uh, readily available, affordable material. Also, concrete's really cheap. Cheap. Yeah. There's not a lot of things where you can get an 80 pound bag of it for around five bucks. Okay. So we're just going to mix some concrete in the bottom of the bucket, cut this dowel into three pieces, stick them right in, wait 24 hours, and pop it right out. Let's do it. We're going to start by cutting this dowel into three 16 inch long pieces. Just going to scoop in some concrete. This is a 5,000 PSI mix, so it's a little bit stronger than a typical concrete. And we're just going to add some water. 
The only way to really screw this up is by adding too much water. And that sort of weakens the concrete. I'm just going to mix this to about the consistency of oatmeal. And the key is to make sure that there's no dry concrete at the bottom. And then mixing it with your dial that you just cut. Yeah, I actually uh, try to show things that don't require a lot of precision. And we just put in all three sticks. And I just sort of eyeball it to make sure they're all level. The bottom of the bucket forms the concrete, and the rest sort of forms the diameter of your legs. Yeah. And here's what it looks like after 24 hours. Mm -hmm. We're just going to flex the bucket to create a little separation between the concrete and the bucket. And now we're ready to pull it out. <laughs> Ta-da! Look at this thing. You got a real seat, you got three legs, no wobble at all. No, it's pretty easy, huh? And so after you made this and posted it, did anyone make it? Uh, we've seen about 10,000 of them made around the world. There's actually a couple in uh, Australia. They make them. They make really cool different sort of uh, marbleized concrete, and they actually make and sell them. Yep. I've seen people in Alaska make them with, uh, for ice fishing, but it's just, uh, it's just frozen water. Nice. Um, and yeah, I think we've seen them now made on about six different continents. That's incredible. So you won the bet. I won. All right. Well, Ben, thank you very much. My we pleasure. are going to be watching to see what's next. Great. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. So, Roger, you promised me chainsaws. Looks like you are ready. I uh, am. I am ready, but I wanted to talk to you about a couple things. Every year, 36,000 people are injured by a chainsaw. It's got to be one of the most dangerous tools. It has to be. You're gonna, whatever you're going to use in the garden, it'll never measure up to this. So every time I use it, I say, this saw can hurt me. All right, so we're talking safety. and yep, we've discussed, got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, because we've discussed the gear before, and uh, yep. I remember the lesson well. Safety glasses, yep. in addition to a helmet with a face mask, and definitely hearing protection, in this case, built in. Gloves, you love to see used, and then the chaps. I will never forget this lesson. We took a pair of jeans and put it on the mannequin, took the saw, and it went right through clean right. as a whistle. And in contrast, when we do the same thing with chaps, I mean, it literally shut the chainsaw down almost instantly. It cut through, but then it grabbed that, uh, what was it, ballistic fiber? Ballistic fibers, and it stopped it. I have not used a chainsaw without chaps on since I saw that. I'm glad to hear it. All right, so that's the gear. What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about safety features on the saws themselves. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a gas or an electric. They all have the same features. All right, so what onboard features are we looking at? Okay, what we're going to look at right here is called a chain break. It follows Newton's third law of physics that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Yep. If you hit the tip of a saw, it's going to kick back like that. Huh. And we want to stop that from hitting anyone. So that's interesting. So when it's forward like this, that's an operation mode. Yep. And you're saying that the kickback puts it into this brake mode? Right. So you just protected your arm and your forearm from getting cut. But what's actually going on when we'll it goes into brake right mode? Take a look right here. You'll see. This turns the chains. This is the main sprocket that goes to the engine. Okay. So on top of it, we put this, and it actually slides on. And when you go to lock the handle, the it tightens right around this and stops it. So this right here moves, which moves that, that. tightening this, which will just stop that right down. Exactly. So that is you got the built-in brake feature. All yeah. right. Now, the other thing we want to look at is down here. This is called a chain catch. Huh. If for some reason this chain was going around and derailed, it could come flying back. So this is designed to grab it before it comes back at Very you? Very simply, it gets wrapped on that and doesn't get back to you at all. I'd like to know that's there. And then here we have locking triggers. This is great because you can take and lock it down, leave it, or take it and move it, and then activate it again so you can use the saw. So it requires two steps, actually, right? If you just try to push the trigger, that's not going to work. Yep. To press one, then push two. Yep. And that's great because if you're carrying the saw, you don't want to actually There's trigger There's no way it can, it can activate. Right. you got to be in position, one, two. Now that is good to know that these features are built into the saws. Yeah. One more thing I like people to know, if you're not comfortable using the saw, 
hire a pro. If you're not comfortable, don't use it. There you go. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Thank you. Hey, Richard, welcome to Nashville. Nice to be back in this great city. I love the city and I love this house. It's beautiful. Thank How long you. have you guys been here? I've been here about five years and we got married about a year and a half ago. Congratulations, that's great. I like the feel of the place, it's terrific. Thanks, thanks. It did not always look this good though. What do you mean? Well, when I moved in, it was a bit of a bachelor pad. Early man cave? Yes, yes, we're slowly <laughs> transforming it. The effect of Christy is good. And it looks great here too. Nice little dining area and a beautiful kitchen. This doesn't look original. No, it's not. We actually renovated it last year. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm an architect by trade, so as soon as we moved in here, I wanted I had plans to completely redo everything. Right. We actually renovated our master bedroom, master bath, and master closet last year, too. You guys have been busy. <laughs> we have, but there's one room we haven't quite gotten to yet. All right, lead on. So, Richard, this is our very original 1960s well, bathroom. I've seen a few million of these in my life. Yeah, we don't use it very often, but I was taking a shower, and the shower valve actually came off in my hand. It stripped off. Yeah. Um, the I took it to the home center. I got a new one, but it's never quite w worked right. It actually leaks down into the crawl space. So it leaks inside the wall. That's correct. All right, you know it doesn't match, right? Yeah. <laughs> well aware. All right, so what you've got here is original equipment to this house. This is called a three valve. And if you could see behind the wall, there'd be a hot water line that comes up here and a cold water line that comes up here. Now, there's a stem unit. There's the hot and the cold. And when you turn it, it lets water come into the valve body that's behind the wall. And now it comes to this point called a diverter. And then the water will either come down through the spout or if you close the diverter, it'll stop it and force the water up to the shower head. Now, many of these brands, you can still get the factory replacement parts, not the wrong ones like I think you got. All right, but what we're going to do is to actually, you know where the water shut off is, right? I do. Okay, why don't you turn that off and I'll go get some tools and we'll do a little bit of exploration. Sounds good. All right, Richard, water's off. All right, good. So I put a drop cloth in here. I want to protect the tub, but I also want to make sure none of these small screws fall down that drain. All right, so now let's just be sure that that water is indeed off. It is good. Okay, so our excavation begins by taking the handles off. Many times on these uh, handles, there's a little thing called an index that says either hot, cold, or an arrow, but this doesn't. It has these exposed screws. So let's start with your wrong one. Okay. All right, so these are called the escutcheons. These are the correct ones right here. And these are put on clockwise. And so to get them off, you just go counterclockwise. And sometimes it's hard to do. It looks like, see this? It looks like somebody used a big pair of pliers and scored that up. Was that you? You did that last time? No. It wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> okay, there's one. Oh, that was nice and loose. That might be. This is not right. Look at this. This escutcheon should come off separately from the stem, and this whole thing is turning. That might be part of your problem why you were leaking down inside the wall. Okay, that, it should have looked like this. Okay, so now let's do the last one. And this one's definitely too loose too. It doesn't have a gasket there. So. Okay, so there's one more to get out. Now, in this case, you could get pliers on it and get right onto that gland, but in many cases, this valve body is way back inside the tile. So they make special tools for this. This is called tub sockets. All the different sizes you might find. Let's try this one. Okay. Come on, there you go. Great. All right. Okay, so here's our cold stem. All right, so all the parts are out of our valve body. Let's see what we got. Oh, good. 
So, Logan, here is your shower valve. Okay. Right? So here's the three valves. Here's the new stem you got. Here's the, the hot, the cold, and here's that diverter. Uh -huh. As I mentioned, the hot and cold come this way to the diverter down to the spout. Now, these stems, they all look very similar, but they all have one basic function. This is a cutaway of what uh, looks like. So I do love my cutaways. So I'm going to give you this. Okay. So behind the valve body is full city water pressure. This is called the seat. And this stem unit's only job is to make sure this washer holds tight against that seat. So in normal mode, it's closed off and no water goes anywhere. But let me just turn this over, and you can see right here that here's the thread. So when, that, you, when you turn the handle, it lifts it off of the seat. When you close it, it goes onto the seat. And that's really the only action we need from the stem unit. So it's an Im important thing to make sure that the water only goes out through the spout or shower head. So you can see there's a gland right here and there's a bonnet right here. Well, between those two parts, you see this right here? There's a oh, little yeah. gasket called a bonnet gasket right here or bonnet packing. And we have to tighten this enough to compress this so that as we move this, water doesn't leak up here. It only goes this way. All right? So that's the basic function. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of different stem units on the market. Now, okay. I'm going to move this diverter out of the way and look at the comparison right here. This yeah. is your original, and this is the new one. Do you see differences? Well, it looks like the threads are a little different here and Excellent. here. Excellent. That's longer here and shorter here. And it looks like maybe the washer may be a different way size. Way bigger here, uh, way smaller here, but it's also a different length. Mm -hmm. And look at this. The splines are different. Oh, yeah. Now, there are 20 different splines at least, so you can't just take one handle off of one manufacturer and move it on to another one. Huh. Okay? So... We can find the right parts, the original parts, I'm sure, for this valve body. But I don't think that's what's causing the leak that you talked really? about down at the crawl space. I think that had to do with the diverter. Yeah. Now, the diverter's role is to sit in the middle, and when the water comes from the heart of the coal side, it lets the water in normal operation fall down into the tub spout. Okay. But when you turn it this way and close off one port, all of a sudden the water can't go down the spout. It has to go up to the shower head. Okay. Right, yeah. But when, if you remember, when I backed off that escutch, remember, it was so loose, and it didn't even have a gasket here. I think what was happening is, every time you open hot or cold, the water came this way. Instead of falling through the tub spout, it actually fell right inside the wall and down into the crawl space. Okay. All right? So I'm going to take these original parts and pieces, and since we have it this far back, let's replace seats, stems, escutcheons, handles, and put you back in business. Sounds great. All right. All right, so the good news is I found the parts we needed. There was this little specialty plumbing wholesale that has just repair parts. Perfect. Wonderful. So let's get started. So we're going to replace the seats. Now they come uh, brand new right here, and you can see there's a, a square inside. So there's special wrenches made for all the different uh, varieties okay. of seats. So let's okay. just be sure I get this in here correctly. Okay. Just give it a little tap just to seat it. And now they have a special ratchet. All right, so let's put the new ones in. All right, so let's put our new stems in. There's our diverter. Okay, now snug them up with the tub socket. Okay. Tight, but not too tight. So now these glands are tightened up, but remember that bonnet packing I was talking yeah, about? Yeah. Now look at this, see how loose this yeah. is? I don't want water yeah. from leaking out right there. Okay. So I'll take an adjustable open end and snug up that bonnet. Much better. So we have our parts and pieces in place. The next piece is the trim. 
Now there's a threaded adapter so that will go inside that bonnet. And that can thread in a fair amount. And the escutcheon also has a thread on the inside so that I can adjust this escutcheon right back against the tile. If it doesn't, I can cut it shorter. So there's where our adjustability is to make sure it's tight against the tile. All right, time for our handles next. These are X-arm handles, so we're going to set them so you can read what label it is, hot and cold. And uh, while I do this, why don't you run down and turn on that main water supply. Will do. All right, with that, all the handles match. It looks like it did back in 1960. It looks perfect, Richard. I don't have to come back for another 50 years at least. Well, I hope we see you in Nashville again before then. All right, my friend, thanks. Thank you. Now you got to give the homeowner an A for effort. He did a lot of work on that house. Right. Although he did get tripped up by just the smallest little part. That's right. So the biggest part of this job is to find the right replacement sure. parts. So sometimes you get really lucky. You look and the, right on the handles might be the name of the manufacturer. And if you know that, you go out to the home center and again, if you're lucky, you might see a kit like this. And this has got everything in it. So in this kit, has got everything you see right here. Hmm. It's got the three replacement handles, the escutcheons, the stems, the diverter. Uh, you get even the, the wrench to pull these the, wow. the stems out of the wall and the seats. Now, also in the kit is one part that's really important. I didn't show you this in the piece. This little cap thread gasket goes right here, so when you make it into the wall, it, t it makes a tight watertight seal so it doesn't drip inside the wall. Beautiful. So you get the parts and the tool. That's right. Now, if you pull this out and you don't find the manufacturer's name, right. what are you doing then? Well, then you go out to the home center and there's a magic book. It's the greatest. 200 pages, and you take this and you... You start with the length, and that tells you where to go, and then you match it up, and you match the thread right here, and the length, and the spline, and it will say, this is the part you need, this is the manufacturer, and if you again, if you're lucky, that part is in a bubble pack right there on the wall. If not, you have to go to a specialty plumbing uh, wholesaler that has uh, repair parts, and there's almost, in every market, there's at least one you can find. And there's some guy back there who that's knows right. all of this. He and looks at it and goes, oh, that's, I know exactly what That's what you want. Okay. So in this case, we're okay to repair this, but I just want to make one call out, that this type of valve is not in favor anymore you know it's a three valve so you can mix a little hot and a little cold it comes out through the shower head and then if somebody flushes a toilet mm. there's a drop in pressure and you get completely scalded and so once the pressure of the cold goes down you get too much hot coming right, through that's right so if they had kids or if we were doing a new bathroom because in most jurisdictions you have to have a pressure balanced shower valve now if we're going to replace just the valve I want to show you you could open up the tile wall and pull, pull out that three valve and pipe in this mixing valve inside the wall. Hmm. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to have three holes, right, where the tile is. So you chip away the tile, and look at this plate. It's so cool. This plate would cover over where those three holes were. Yeah, One, we two, put... three, right. and a little, a little hold it. This and one then, goes in the middle. Right, there you go. And then that trims over the top, and that's that. So it's a, the perfect... Uh, upgrade for a bathroom to make it safe if you right. have kids. In this case, that was not necessary. Simple right. repair, no that's kids. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that's why they're writing us because they get good information <laughs> like that. So thank Hope you. So. All right. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Rich Trithui for Ask This Old House. So don't you know? Just stop watching. <laughs>